morning and welcome back to sunny central Portugal. We're back on Miracle Mountain. We're the Indie Project, B and Theo. In 2017, we bought an abandoned property in central Portugal and spent the last few years turning it into a fully fledged homestead, converting an old stone barn into a cozy tiny home. Working non-stop and overcoming many obstacles, it turned out better than we ever could have imagined. As one chapter closes, another one begins. Our dreams of living even more remotely in a fairy tale forest with space for animals to roam and our passions to grow became a reality. Before we have even moved there, it was devastated by a huge wildfire, drastically altering the landscape. Immense flash floods followed as the land couldn't hold onto the water. Follow us as we carve out our new life on Miracle Mountain. So we have just escaped into the shade so we can tell you guys all about our crazy adventure. So back in 2020, we were poised to ship our van over to Canada and drive all the way to Alaska. So we had some unfinished business that we could finally do and it was absolutely amazing. So our trip started in Seattle. B found an absolutely incredible deal from a company that needed their brand new truck camper, a Ford F350, taking all the way from Seattle to Anchorage in Alaska. And it had a certain amount of miles on the clock and it's a pretty big journey to be honest. 90 miles on the clock. Yeah, no, That's I mean, <laughs> I mean, we had a certain amount of miles uh, that we could drive, but yeah, ya. it was a brand new truck. We went well over that. Yeah, I was terrified to drive it. So I just let Theo do all the driving, which is, totally fine by me to put it into perspective the truck in the photos and the video doesn't look very big but it's actually bigger than our sprinter van yeah. a long wheelbase sprinter van it's it, crazy i find that absolutely mad and it was just the perfect thing to drive because we started in seattle like theo said and then we headed north straight away and our first amazing stop was just on the outskirts of whistler in this stunning stunning place right by the river it was incredible. There was a river right next to our camping spot. Loads of people wanted this spot because they kept driving backwards and forwards, but we got there just in the nick of time and we had it all to ourselves. Well, no, we didn't. Apart from... Yeah, there was an unwelcome guest. The mosquitoes. Yeah, the mosquitoes were just battling to get into the truck camper. We tried as hard as we could to be outside, even with spray, even with the candles, all the stuff. They wanted our blood, so <laughs> whilst it looked idyllic, there was a reason why I think no one had parked there before we did. So this is the beast of a truck. It is a Ford Super Duty XLT F350, an absolute beast. Four wheel drive, double cab with the truck camper, and it's brand new. When we picked it up, it just had 90 miles on it, and we're currently parked up in a Cabela's just there it's a hunting and fishing shop it's an amazing store if you've not been there the go you will not be disappointed if you like outdoor stuff it's also the same as bass pro and look who's here the bee has turned up to give you guys an idea of the scale of this beast look at the bonnet the bonnet literally goes up to bee's face it's massive and I know it doesn't look that big just there behind me, but this truck is actually longer and bigger than our camper van, which is a Mercedes Sprinter long wheelbase. And if I've not mentioned it already, we've driven this from Seattle to Anchorage, which is where we are at the moment, over 3000 miles. And look at this, it's hard to see the scale and that is why I use B, so you could see how high the bonnet and how lifted this is off the ground. But look how far this comes over the cab. This is the bedroom, so I'm going to take you guys inside and show you the layout because it is really cool. So next we headed up to Prince George where we headed west and we wanted to go on the Cassia Highway. We'd heard amazing things from some friends of ours who had done it before, and it looked really quiet, and there was more chance of seeing wildlife there because it was more quiet mm. than the Alaskan Highway. Which is the traditional route, and I think I would like to eventually go back and maybe drive back from Alaska down the Alaska Highway all the way, just to see what it was like. But the journey, as soon as we headed towards 
Kitwanga, which is basically where the Cassia Highway began. It's a mouthful. Yeah, it already started to get a lot quieter along that route and we were really excited to join the Cassia Highway for a number of reasons. Like Theo said, it was much quieter. There was hardly any gas stations along the way and we did see wildlife. Every time we saw a gas station, we filled up because we didn't know when the next one was going to be and then the wildlife began, bear after bear after bear after bear. It was a bit ridiculous and we saw all of them in one day and it was all thanks to our friends Tread the Globe and Overlanding Sophia. They'd mentioned going on the Cassia Highway and heading off, taking a little detour towards Stuart and that's where we saw all the bears and we actually did bump into Overlanding Sophia so it was really nice to see them. And the fly screens are definitely needed, especially in the areas that we have been through. So British Columbia, the mosquitoes are really bad, as well as the Yukon and in Alaska. So these fly screens make it bearable in the evenings. This was the first time that me and B had been in a truck camper and we absolutely love this one, especially the layout. Everything's really well thought out. So you've got this nice big solid handle at the back to pull yourself in because it is quite a climb. And you can see there, all of the windows and doors have fly screens. So since we've been back from North America, summer has now hit full swing. So we're getting all of our outdoor chores done really early in the morning before it gets super hot in the afternoon. And I've been enjoying playing a game on my phone called June's Journey. And I'm gonna tell you all about it. It's a hidden object mystery game, which is completely free to download. The more you play, the more scenes you unlock, allowing you to uncover clues, earn coins and energy to play more scenes and remodel your mansion and garden island to earn flowers. I really enjoy playing games on my phone as a way to have some downtime. And because of the murder mystery element on this, you uncover loads of different clues throughout the game, getting you further into the story. June's journey is set in the 1920s, so all the scenes feature items from that era, such as toy horses for children or drinking canisters. And when you complete each star for a scene, you win a chest with mystery objects inside, such as remodeling equipment, coins, energy, and characters. And even better is that June's Journey is a completely free game to download. You can play it on Android, iOS, and also PC on Facebook games. So what are you waiting for? Download the game by clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code on screen. And let me know what chapter you're on in the comments. So the inside of this truck camper is surprisingly roomy and really nicely done out. I am super impressed. So on the right hand side, we actually have a sofa bed. So if you've got more than two people, they can stay in here, which is cool. You've got loads of storage up there on the right with my new hat that I'm looking forward to wearing in Portugal. And then on the left here, you can see there's a sliding door. Slide that open and you've got a decent sized toilet and shower. It's decent, it's, it's enough to get the job done. It's not massive, but what you expect in a truck camper really nice skylight with a fan in there as well I'm just going to shut the fly net behind me to keep the mozzies out B is just lying on the bed out the way so I can film this tour she's reading but look at the size it's really wide because it's essentially a big square box on the side of this truck and you can see we've got more storage up here we've even got an extractor fan a nice two burner gas hob. We've got my socks down here next to a tea towel. But you can see there's a storage everywhere. It's really cool. Look at that. Everywhere you look, there's areas to store stuff, which is what you want in a camper van. You've got a really nice size sink for the size of the space, to be honest. And then you've got your control panel just there. So You've got your water heater, it's got hot water, your water pump, your lights and your porch lights, your outside lights. And then over this side, we have down here, this is the heater which works off gas. Super simple, you just turn it to how warm you want it. We've also got plug sockets everywhere, some nice blinds for the window. Look at that, it's really smart and really everything just works nicely. We got the fridge. It's a really nice big size fridge freezer. 
which is cool. And then we've even got this little curtain that we've used quite a lot in the bedroom area to keep it warm because it has got down to like minus numbers on this trip. I think minus one or two. So it has been a little bit chilly on the evenings and inside we haven't felt a problem. Did you say we've got a heater? We have got a heater. I have explained the heater. It's a gas heater. It's, it's good. It works. It does the job. I prefer a diesel heater like we have in our van. It gives off less condensation and stuff like that. But this does the job. I forgot to mention there's two, I think they're Max Air fans or something like that. That one definitely is. And you can get a really nice circulation and through breeze with both of these on, turned on, or well, this one doesn't have any power to it. It's just like a manual lift up. But if you lift that up and turn that fan on, you can get a really good through current. And then look at the size of this bed. This is massive and either side of the bed, there's like another foot of storage and each person has their own little cubby hole to store stuff, which is amazing. And then on this side, more storage for clothes. You can actually hang stuff in there. And blinds. And blinds, yeah. Showed them the blinds, they're really cool. They're nice. They're good, but they're not blackout blinds and it currently <laughs> doesn't get dark here at the moment. So that can be a problem. And B got herself <laughs> an eye mask. How cool is that? So yeah, I'm sleeping next to a, what is that meant to be a fox? <laughs> but overall, this truck camper is actually really, really cool. I was pleasantly surprised. It is, however, a little bit thirsty on fuel, as you can imagine. So this takes gas, it takes petrol. I was surprised, I thought all of these big trucks were diesel, but no, it is a brand new truck and obviously they're trying to phase out diesel. So this is petrol and we're currently, on the whole trip, we've got 10 MPG. Not great and very expensive, especially coming through Canada, but overall, it wasn't too bad in the end and it was well worth the money for the fuel for the experiences that we got to have in this truck. Finding amazing park ups in the middle of nowhere was no hassle at all. It was actually sorry to butt in but I remember the one night that we saw all the bears it was literally every five minutes there was a black bear at the side of the road wasn't there? Incredible. And we, we decided that we were going to park just off the main road in a nice little area by the trees so we could just hop on the road again in the morning because it was quite late and just about a kilometer away from there there was a black bear at the side of the road so we we're on red alert and when we pulled into the spot there was a fresh pile of bear scat so that evening i spent a lot of time staring out the window because it was also in june it didn't really get dark that much did it so it we was... were nice and high up in the truck yeah. camper <laughs> it didn't get dark and it had plenty of windows. So it was almost like we were in a hide where mm. we could just keep the windows open, well, the well, blinds yeah. open, <laughs> and just look out for hours on end over the most amazing scenery. And if we went into detail about everything that we did and we saw, this video could go on for five series. <laughs> it really could. And the thing is, it was hard to go to sleep because the sun didn't set and there was the possibility of seeing amazing things outside. You really didn't want to miss anything, but obviously you do have to sleep. So we did dedicate a few hours a night to actually sleeping before hitting the road again. So we were driving 10 hours a day, pretty much every single day. And we love driving. That's why we used to live in a van and we've seen some incredible things all around Europe. But this trip was something special. It really was exactly, almost, and more of what we imagined. We made it into the Yukon, which was pretty exciting. It was a province we'd never been to in Canada before, and it got even quieter once we reached there. We stocked up in Whitehorse on some supplies, and the road drastically changed the further we got, to, well, the closer we got towards Alaska. We'd spoken to someone the day before and they'd mentioned the road and we were a bit like, well, it hasn't been too bad so far, but because of the weather up there, I guess it really does a number on the road. So we had to go quite slow, to be fair. And once you get into the Yukon, the views are just absolutely incredible. It was stunning. Mm. You, you just, it was hard to take in. It was unbelievable. It really was a stunning place. And that means there was lots of rivers, there was lots of lakes, and the fishing got better and better. And I even managed to catch myself a really big lake trout. 
that he did release and put back in the lake. It was catch and release <laughs> only, so I let it back, but it was a monster. We spent our first night in Alaska at a really cool free campground, which was kind of hard to believe. And it even had free canoes with life vests to take out onto this beautiful lake, which we did. It was really nice to canoe together. I was a little bit apprehensive because I don't take directions very well, especially <laughs> from Theo. There's something in my brain where if he tells me what to do, I'm immediately like, no, I want to do the opposite, but I did listen to him. Theo is a canoe master and we did very well. We didn't get lost on the lake. It was really fun, actually. And that particular lake was full of pike. So there was people out in boats and fishing off the shore to try and catch themselves a pike. I've caught pike in the past in Finland, Finland and Sweden Finland. and Norway, but I didn't manage to catch one in <laughs> That was in Alaska. That was, as I said, so we it was just the crossed first over night. into Alaska. Yeah. And then from there, we carried on in towards Alaska and decided to head into Valdez, which we'd never been to before, but it looked absolutely amazing. And even though the weather was quite miserable when we were there, it actually added to the experience. It was a beautiful mountain village that had a fjord running right into it, snow capped mountains. And there was so much wildlife, it was actually kind of hard to believe. Yeah, Valdez is a really good fishing village atmosphere. It really reminded us of northern Norway, didn't mm, it? It did. It did feel like Norway. And it was so cool to look out of the window of the truck camper and see sea otters eating, sea lions, seals. There was the possibility of bears. We didn't see any bears there, but we did see something that... I still can't quite believe we saw and it was two eagles doing a mating ritual from what people have told us and it was absolutely stunning to see. Oh, there's a fly trying to get in my face. Yeah, there's eagles absolutely everywhere in Valdez and we were set to see even more eagles further north that we went. So as we got further into Alaska, we were obviously heading for Anchorage, but we wanted to make some detours. We wanted to see as much of Alaska as we could in the time that we had. So we headed to the Denali Highway. We did 135 miles mm. on a road that was just basically gravel and dirt and it was exceptional. There some was, of the most amazing scenery we saw on the whole drive was on there, I've got to say. There was, it just felt so remote and there was nothing there and that was why it was so beautiful. I think we saw probably about five cars. We did get chatting to two guys who were in an RV doing fishing for the weekend. I think they'd just caught a gigantic fish. Was it, was it a massive, trout? massive, big, big lake trout. It was huge. Twice as big as the one I caught and the <laughs> one I caught was massive. But it was such a beautiful road and I'm really happy that we did get to drive along it because it was different to what we had originally planned and got us across and then onto the main road towards Anchorage, which is where we needed to go. And soon after that, we saw a beautiful moose just on the side of the road grazing. It Shortly after that, it ran across the road. So a lot of seeing wildlife on these trips is all just down to timing, being in the right place at the right time. After we left the Denali Highway, we got onto the main road all the way down to Anchorage and we saw something there that, to be honest, was not what we ever thought we would get to witness. I've been looking at fishing spots around and in Anchorage and there's this place called Ships Creek that I found online. So we went down to check it out and I thought, oh, you know, there might be a couple other people fishing down there. there I was... literally remember you saying... <laughs> <laughs> we drove over to the bridge and Theo was like, you know, there might be a couple of people. And when we saw what we saw, we were just Hundreds. like, our mouths dropped over. <laughs> Hundreds of people lining the bank of the river that meets mad. the sea, trying to catch themselves a salmon because there was actually a fishing derby going on there. So a big fishing competition. I think you can win $10,000 for the biggest salmon of the competition. And you get yourself a gold nugget as well. <laughs> So obviously, <laughs> it's just a random gold nugget. It's just so, so obviously, there was a gold nugget involved, so I had to take part. <laughs> so I went down there for a couple of nights, and we won a gold nugget. No, we didn't. We didn't. But I did catch a salmon, which was incredible. So I went down there for a couple of nights on my own, and stood in what I can only describe as the stickiest clay It was like a mud. mire. It was, it was ridiculous. I was stuck in the mud basically for hours on end, trying to catch myself a salmon along the bank, 
with loads of other local Alaskans, which is really nice because I got to got to know the locals and they nicknamed me Portugal basically <laughs> and they'd see how I was doing. So it was a really nice vibe down there. And I actually caught a salmon on the second day and the guy next to me screamed, fish on. And I was like, oh, this is it. I've got the salmon. I brought it right up to the surface. I managed to get it to the bank and then it came off the hook and it was devastating. And yeah, you can imagine I was like, ah, oh, <laughs> and everyone just let a big sigh like oh well, I was the fish relieved. is gone i was actually applauding the salmon so you know. yeah so anyway so i got the best of both worlds i caught a salmon but i obviously was getting on a train the next day and had nothing to do with the salmon so i would have gifted the salmon to one of the locals that i got to know who i was fishing next to but yeah it was a really good experience to do and very bizarre with all the trains and the noise fishing in downtown anchorage so after we dropped off the truck camper, we needed to make our way to Seward and it was a bit of a random reason why we were going there. Our original plan was to explore Alaska for a little bit longer, but unfortunately we couldn't find any good priced vehicles. It was very, 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 very expensive. Like we're talking $3,000 or £3,000. Pounds. Yeah. So that's probably like nearer... $3,700 more. for two weeks to extend our trip in Alaska just to explore more car. of Alaska just for a hire car and then yeah. we'd have to pay hotel fees obviously the fuel on top of that mm. we'd already paid £1,500 in fuel for the truck camper because it was F350, a proper the F350 she was a guzzler she got us where she needed to but she liked to drink fuel yeah, a all lot a lot i think when we <laughs> filled up in canada it was oh. it was 300 dollars canadian dollars a tank so yeah. very expensive so this trip it wasn't planned was it well no once we dropped it off we were kind of just going where we could we were going with the flow and we just thought what's a good way to see more that we haven't done and I randomly mentioned, oh, maybe we could like look up a last minute cruise. And neither of us had ever been on a cruise before. Theo, we both laughed at it to begin with. Cause it was like, I don't know if I want to do that. But then the idea of going along the Alaskan coastline was really, really appealing because there's, there's areas you can't get to by car. Yeah, I was and also, just going to say, there was loads of places yeah. on the way up that we wanted to visit, but obviously you could only get there by boat mm, or you'd have to pay to to get a better look at it so we just thought let's work it out when we're thinking about a budget staying on a boat for a week with accommodation food fuel and all of that stuff covered it worked out so so cheap so we ended up jumping on a cruise but from Seward all the way to Vancouver but that's the beauty of traveling kind of on a whim not really knowing what you're doing next because the reason we got this cruise with Norwegian it was the Norwegian jewel that we were traveling on and the reason we got it for so cheap is because we were almost probably some of the last people to buy tickets I think we booked it about a week before it was due to leave and we just got an <laughs> incredible deal mm, and, and it was <laughs> so much better than I expected hang on a second though you haven't let me finish where I was trying to say we had to get to Seward from Anchorage and we didn't have the That's truck true. camper anymore so we were looking into different ways to get there and there is the Alaska Railroad which I think a lot of people know about because it takes you through absolutely stunning scenery so we decided to go on that and the train left at really really early I think it might have been before 7am I can't quite remember I think it was 6.45 so it was very early and it wasn't like any kind of train we'd ever been on so the battery just overheated in the camera but we are back and basically my idea of going on a train when B mentioned it, I wasn't super stoked because my idea of trains was getting on a train in Birmingham and going into Birmingham city centre. It just wasn't very nice. This train, however, was absolutely next level and I definitely recommend it. It was more of like a sightseeing tour and it was great that they took our luggage and put it on there and then took it off for us right at the end. And the views were insane. We saw things that we never would have seen if we'd been in a vehicle. We drove Eagle through Alley. Areas, yeah, we drove through areas where cars couldn't go. And just as we got towards Seward, there was a place called Eagle Alley where there was tons of I, bald eagles. I think we saw 15 eagles, bald eagles, in a row, we saw a bear and we saw a couple of moose mm. along the way as well. Seward was a really cute town and it had loads of stuff to see and do. And we stayed there for two nights before we got on the boat. 
yet again, I really wasn't sold on the idea of a cruise. To me, a cruise ship was all dress up fancy and that kind of thing. And that's not really my style, as you probably know, if you've watched the channel by now, but I had an absolutely incredible time because driving all the way from Seattle to Alaska and doing loads of adventure along the way was quite tiring. So it was really nice to go on the cruise, mm -hmm. relax, eat all the food that we could, drink all the drinks that we could, because everything was included. <laughs> and we spent most of the days in the spa, watching whales from the ship, which was just absolutely incredible. We also got to see loads of beautiful coastline. We stopped off in a few places. I'm trying to think of them now. There was Hubbard Glacier, Icy Strait Point, Skagway, Juno, Ketchikan, and I think that was it. And we ended up in Vancouver at the end. So there's a little travel hack for you. North America can be an incredibly expensive place to travel if you're staying in hotels every single night. It's hard to find a cheap one, especially last minute, but this way we got all our drinks, all our food, all of our accommodation. We did <laughs> pay a little bit extra to upgrade for the spa. We basically had the spa to ourselves mm. pretty much the whole entire trip, which was so nice. We had a sauna, there was like a women's section, a man's section, and then like a, a joint couple section, section with yeah. these really nice ceramic heated seats that you could lie on and just look at the icebergs floating past. It was unbelievable. It and was as, a nice way to relax before getting back to farm life, basically. <laughs> and as it's good to be back, but it definitely was a really nice relaxing time. We were both really missing the animals and unfortunately on the way back, that's when Theo got his back issues because we were on a flight that was so cramped. I don't think I've ever been on such a cramped plane and it was very uncomfortable for 10 hours. And by the time we got back, Theo's back was just had enough. I feel like tall people should get free upgrades. <laughs> it should just be all tall people for free in business class. I just think, how about they just give you a little bit more room? Because <laughs> they're not cheap. After all, flying is very expensive. So after being sardines, Theo's back completely gave up. We ended up having to go to the hospital, getting all sorts of stuff done to him. To I got an injection <laughs> in my ass, in my stomach and got given loads of different pills, a pill that I didn't really know what it was. X-rays, fondlings. But <laughs> the doctors came back a few hours later to check on me and they were like, so the pain's gone. And I was like, nope, exactly the same. It did not touch the pain at all, which was quite worrying. But as you can see, I'm definitely on the mend, which is good. Yeah, it's and good to have you, you back, actually, because I've been doing back. all the farm work on my own in terms of like back physically working I've with me. Back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good pun there. But thank <laughs> you so much for all the lovely messages I've been receiving about my back and my recovery. I basically spent as much time as possible in the hot tub. And that has been the key to my recovery. That has really helped. Lovely, warm water. It sounds quite strange to be in warm water when it's so warm outside. Yeah. But under the veranda stays nice and cool. I'm sitting in the hot tub just feeling so grateful that this is my life because when I'm sitting in the hot tub and I'm overlooking the lake under the veranda on a beautiful sunny day, it feels like I'm on a holiday, but I'm not. This is where I live and we're so grateful for that. No but more yeah. thrice times in the hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> so I really hope you guys enjoyed that update about what we got up to. We were gone for a whole month. So what we just explained happened over four weeks, basically from the 1st of June to 29th of June. the 29th of June. So it was a long trip, but I've got to say, I think it was one of the, the best trips that we've done so far and it wasn't just the trip it was also kind of like a recce for maybe something in the future mm. but right now we are back on the property it is looking as beautiful oh. as ever and we are, we are so inspired we've got some exciting stuff coming up i mean we always do but this stuff i'm really excited to get down dirty with it having a break <laughs> just clears the mind and it just gets you so excited for what's to come so if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe right now because we have so much fun stuff coming in the future. And once the weather cools down a little bit, we have a really cool project on the way. 
So thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you would do if you were going on a road trip from Seattle all the way to Anchorage, because I'd love to hear what you're getting up to. And maybe you've done it yourself. So exactly. yeah, it'd be and cool to hear. Tune into the next video because we're going to show you how the animals have been getting on and how all they are. So we'll catch you on the next one.